So I'm just kind of going to get started initially to just give you a bit of background as to why I'm actually here today. Um, and I know that cheer music and the cost of cheer music is, is a um, topic of conversation that many gyms want to have and want answers for. And um, my background is in music licensing um, and I'm also a cheerleader myself. I've competed with Team England Para Cheer and um, I've been on all star teams as well myself. Uh, and I'm still heavily involved in Para Cheer. Um, but I, my background was always in music and in music licensing. And when the whole issues surrounding um, music and cheerleading came about, I basically set up the task of creating a solution for the industry whereby we work with, with the music industry to clear the rights, um, specifically for cheerleading that include all the rights that you need. And that's basically why I'm here today. Um, my, my experience uh, in music itself involves working for a music licensing company before uh, and working with a number of different labels and publishers, uh, licensing music into TV, film and advertising and so on. So um, to get started today, just a few little webinar kind of tips and hacks. Um, we've got a little chat function. So if you wanted to message some, some chats, then you can go ahead and do that, ask some questions, some topics of conversation that you might want to talk about. Um, and then uh, we also have a QA. and a um, So you can also ask questions through that. And um, you can also raise your hand, which is kind of like a little wave to be like, hey, I have something to say. Um, so there's a few different things that you can do on the webinar here. If you need to leave early or you haven't actually been able to make it, then um, we are actually sending a video out uh, after, well, probably tomorrow, um, a video recording of the whole thing. Hopefully we've now got that all, all recording and it's all good. Um, and uh, you will all be muted right now, so we haven't got all this extra noise happening. Um, but if, yeah, if you wanted to raise your hand and, and ask something, then, then we can kind of unmute you and you can um, let us know what you wanted to talk about and what questions you had. So let's actually get started with the webinar. Um, today, the topic of conversation is how much is music costing your gym? And the types of topics that we're going to be covering today is the rise in costs of cheer music, the options that are available for you to be legal, the rights that are required for, um, for sheer music, using cover music, um, what you need as a governing body or an event producer, I know we've got some of you guys here today, and also enforcement. So the first point is, you know, why has there been a rise in cost of cheer music? Well, first it was largely influenced by uh, a lawsuit that had happened um, against the music producers, which then led to the industry kind of forcing um, uh, the use of music towards a licensed model. And one of those models is bespoke music, which I know um, music producers like New Level Music, they've gone completely bespoke, which means they are actually hiring artists in, vocal artists and musicians to actually create music themselves kind of what the music industry does, except specifically for cheerleading. And so, of course, there's naturally going to be a higher cost of that. They've got to hire a music producer, they've got to hire artists, they've got to um, record and edit and mix that music. They need to write lyrics, lyrical content, and it's very time consuming and expensive. Um, and so that, that's why bespoke music is sort of a premium package and um, very much targeted at those very big gyms because they want something that's super custom to them. And it's, and it's a really great way to be legal and actually have something that's completely original um, and unique to a team. Um, the other side of it is the rise in costs are also due to the fact that you need to license music and licensing music means you need to pay a fee to, to purchase the license for a song. And then there's going to be additional admin fees with regards to noting down which tracks are being used to actually go ahead and license that through a platform and so on and so forth. And it's not that music producers are trying to make more money, which is something that some people say, but it's actually that they're now doing it legally. And so therefore the extra costs have to be passed down to the teams. And ultimately it's a cost that we should have always had but due to a kind of lack of knowledge and understanding about music licensing and and um it just wasn't something that anyone did 
And to be honest, the music industry didn't actually have a solution in place to handle these types of licenses. But cheerleading essentially got quite big very quickly um, and was all kind of over social media. And naturally, somehow the music industry found out. And this is a problem that's not just unique to cheerleading. There are many other different sports that um, have, have this licensing issue. Um, and, it's, and it's also a global issue too. They often get people say, oh, it's just the American rules. But actually, no, it is a global issue and it's governed by copyright law, which is held together by a treaty called the Berne Convention, um, where basically it states that copyright law exists worldwide. And if you need to, if you want to use music, uh, you need to ask permission from the, um, the actual artists or the writers of the music um, to use that in any other way than listening to it on Spotify, for example. So um, the reason why I started Clicking Clear uh, was we obviously saw uh, this, this issue uh, occur and I was kind of able to, to work with the music industry people that I know very well to create a feasible solution for, for the industry that is affordable. So we are working directly with record labels and publishers like Universal, Warner, and a number of others to provide music, which is fully pre-cleared with all the rights that you need onto our platform, um, which the team will, will send a link to. Um, so that you as a gym owner and as music producers can actually instantly license music at a click of a button and, and, and have it include all of the rights that you need. Um, now, there, there is a Facebook group that, we, that we've started, um, which is just a general discussion about music, using music, licensing. It involves a number of different people in the industry, cheerleading gyms, some, some music producers, governing bodies, event producers, and so on. It's called Using Music and Cheerleading. And we've created that as a community for you to share your frustrations, to share the challenges that you face, um, to share the great things that you've experienced in cheerleading music. You know, what, what great bespoke mixes are you getting made from a company like New Level Music or, um, you know, what tracks are you licensing from Click and Clear and, and so on. And so it's really worth being part of that conversation. Um, I think Emma's just shared it on the chat. So do feel free to, to add yourself on that. We've got some resources on there that I'll, that I'll talk about a little bit later. But in terms of, you know, what options do you have for licensing music and to be legal, which have a varying degree of, of affordability? Well, there are kind of three or four different options uh, that I'd say. The first one is bespoke music. So going completely original, um, it is more expensive because of course the additional costs of, of having real artists create music specifically for cheerleading is expensive and time consuming, but that is an option. And many of the big um, cheerleading gyms do that. And then you've got um, licensing music. So you can license music from you know, a platform like Click and Clear um, and we're, we're working directly with the music industry. And once you've licensed that music, you can have a producer mix that music for you. And there are a number of music producers that we're already working with, which we're, um, we've got a, we're creating a directory for and we'll be uh, releasing that fairly soon. So you can go on to Click and Clear and find the licenses, the songs that you want, license them um, or send them to your music producer or find a music producer. And all of that is kind of on there on, on the website. Um, and music producers will typically charge a fee um, to mix the music and then the license fee or they'll just bundle it all together and you'll charge a charge you'll be charged a fee and it will include the licenses in there it's, it's kind of up to them how they do it uh, but it would also actually be interesting to find out in terms of budgeting you know how, what would be easier for you would it be easier for a music producer just said this is the fee it includes all the licenses or is it easier for a producer to say um this is our mixing fee and this is the fee for the license and this is an estimation of the fee for the licenses um be interesting to get your thoughts so if you've got some some questions or opinions on that please do share it um the licensing fees you know can vary depending on the number of tracks that you want to use and um the the level of artists that you're like the actual tracks that you're using so there's always just that to kind of bear in mind so that was the second one 
The third way of um, licensing or being legal is to, again, license music from a platform like Click and Clear uh, and then mix it yourself. Uh, it was something that teams uh, and, um, used to do all the time. But of course, when all the legal music issues came about, teams are kind of a bit scared or nervous about mixing music themselves and i think that's something that we're really able to open back up again uh, with click and clear is those those teams those small community teams who don't have the budgets to pay music producers can actually just license music and mix the music themselves and, and that's a really great option and there are mixing softwares out there like garage band audacity that where you can use where you can use all of that and and have a go and there's plenty of youtube tutorials and so on as well um, the other option is you can just get pre-made mixes that are licensed and it's actually something that we're working with a number of our music producers with um, where they're going to be licensing music from from our platform and uploading pre-made mixes and that will be all included in in the price you can essentially go on and find music that you can mix and make a custom mix or you can actually just go on to our pre pre-made mix database and just get music straight off there including all of the rights um, that you need with the license agreements and so on and then finally the cheapest way to use music in a cheer mix is to use music that is out of copyright when i say out of copyright it means that the copyright has expired. So in copyright, there is a duration of length, um, varies in every country, <clears throat> but essentially it's usually about 70 or 75 years after the death of the last writer. So for example, the Beatles, um, all of their music is still in copyright. And when um, Paul McCartney passes away, sadly, uh, it, the copyright will go into, will be out of copyright, uh, 70 years after the date of his death um, and so lots you'll hear like gymnastics and for example and some other sports will use a lot of classical music because it is often out of copyright but it's always worth double checking because it may not always be and it may be that <clears throat> the version that you're wanting to use is a new recording that has recently been released um, but that is another option that you can that you can do um, but essentially what Click and Clear do is we work uh, with the music industry and we've got the backing of some of the biggest names in the music industry from Warner to Universal. And we've got the rights to over 6 million tracks. Now on the platform, we have a lot less than that, but we're that's because we're currently working through um, 6 million tracks, very busy over here, um, to, to determine what is fully cleared and what um, we can upload onto the platform. And publishing rights, uh, are, are quite complicated. Copyright has many different um, entities involved because there's often many different people who've wrote, who've written a song. And I'll explain more about that in a little bit. But we're kind of working through that, um, which will mean that we can bring back the sort of benefits of old school mixes and teens and music producers can instantly license music directly from the music industry, um, download it and then mix it for just $15 or $25 per track per mix. And that's for one year's use. So you can use that for a whole season. And then next year, if you wanted to reuse your mix, you can just relicense it. It's super simple. And we've been able to do that largely because of the relationships that we've got within the music industry, but also the fact that as a, as, as a market in cheerleading, there's a lot of demand for music. And because of that high demand, we're able to negotiate down on the prices. And 15 to $25 is kind of unheard of in the music industry. Um, but it's something that they acknowledge is a problem that they, they also need to be a part of and solve. And so that's how we've been able to, to manage that situation. But essentially it saves time, it saves money um, and means that we can deliver great music um, with total peace of mind. So going on to talk a little bit about little education about music licensing, we're gonna talk about the rights that are actually required in cheerleading music and many other sports as well. So there are essentially two sides to music. There's the master rights or the master side, um, which is the right for the actual recording. So who, who actually sang the recording, who, what was the released recording, the actual kind of MP3 file in a way. The other side is the publishing rights. And that's basically um, a number of people who've written the melodies, the lyrics, 
um, the little guitar riff and the drum solo and so on. And essentially there are, you know, several different people often involved in that, particularly when it comes to top 40 well-known music. Um, and you need to have both of those sides in order to um, license a track. You need permission from, from all of those people. And in, in, in cheerleading, in terms of your use, the rights for the use of it, you need the ability to edit and adapt the music. So changing the tempo, adding sound effects and voiceovers, mixing it along with other tracks. Um, basically what a music producer does or what you do to mix the music to your, to, to your routine. Um, so edit and adapt the music. You need the right to choreograph. So that's basically putting the routine to your music because you're interpreting the music in a different way to what it was originally intended. Then you need the right to distribute the mix within your team. So creating like 35 copies uh, or up to 35 copies within your team so that they can use it at home. You can use it in training and you can use it at competition. And then the right to share the music on YouTube and Facebook. And I know that many gyms um, are kind of muting their, uh, muting their routines on YouTube and Facebook. Um, because of, of the music rights issues. And it's, it's, it's really sad because they then can't showcase and share um, the amazing routine that they've put out. So we are including those rights, but the only catch is that it has to be unmonetized. And that basically means you can't make money from the video. And really, like, especially YouTube's content ID system, the way that they can track music, that, which is unlicensed, um, they'll, they'll they'll kind of catch it all anyway and the music industry typically um, will kind of take that, take those little bits of money. Um, but it's only, you know, if, you, if you're getting like 100 views in a video, it's unlikely you'd even be eligible to, to, to monetize the video as it is. But it is a right that we're including, which means you can upload your routine with the music and you know you're all okay. Um, and if you want to find out a little bit more about that, we do have a resource on the Using Music and Cheerleading Facebook page. So just go on there. I think Emma can probably direct you to um, which one it is. There she is. She's got it. She's on it. Um, so do, do check that out on there. And, and then that kind of leads me on to cover music. I know cover music is a really big topic as well. There's quite a few producers kind of creating cover music. And just to give you a bit of information about what it actually is, um, a cover version of a track is, a, um, is essentially a new master right. So let's say, for example, Beyonce's Run the World. That's the original version, version, it's Beyonce's track. Now, if I, as a music producer, for example, wanted to record my own version, Chantal Epps' uh, version of Beyonce's Run the World, I can do that and I can license my master version to, um, to anybody, but I also have to have cleared the publishing rights. Now the publishing rights and Beyonce's Run the World, sadly are fairly complicated, not the most complicated I've ever seen, but there's about six different publishers, so six different companies that you need to get in touch with. And they each have a, a percentage of ownership. So for example, um, one, one publisher will have 20.24%, another will have 8.44%, another will have 10.14%. These are actually the percentages, I'm just not telling you which companies. Um, and, uh, and that will be owned between some of the majors, some of the smaller independent publishers, and you'd have to clear all of those rights in order for it to be legal. Um, and uh, so that's essentially, if you were to license the original track, that's sort of seven people you'd need to speak to. And if you're to license Chantal Epps version, you'd, I'd give you the license. And then I'd have to ensure that I also have a deal with all six of those other publishers that are involved in that track. And as a team, it's, it's kind of your responsibility to check that these licenses and these rights are actually in your license agreements. Um, and we've got a little bit of, of language that you can kind of look out for on cover music. Emma is going to uh, share that again on the Using Music in, in Cheerleading uh, Facebook group to direct you there. Um, and that will be really helpful to kind of understand what to look out for. Um, but essentially, some of the main things that we use is um, we've got a restricted list of artists from some of our rights holders. 
And a restricted list means a list of artists who we cannot use in cheerleading at all right now. And that's because they're either super protective of their rights or they, you know, they don't want anybody to edit and adapt their music. And a couple of examples of that is Christina Aguilera and Justin Timberlake. And so actually those artists aren't licensable for cheerleading. And it's kind of the biggest giveaway um, if a team or music producer is, has the proper licenses or not. But again, check out the, the doc, which Emma has shared, and there's a bit more information about that. So just a couple, a uh, couple more topics left to to talk about here today. Um, I know we've got some governing bodies and some event producers here, and whilst um, you as a team and a music producer need need a license, there is also performing rights licenses needed for a variety of other things. So the team, uh, no, the music producer needs the right to edit and adapt the music and kind of um, and create a new mp3 file and then the team needs the right to choreograph distribute it within their within their team and share it on youtube and facebook and then the event producer whoever's running the competition needs a performing rights license to play the music in the venue and they get that through their collecting society so in the uk we have prs and ppl in the us there's like five or six um, you've got ASCAP and BMI and a number of others. In Canada, you've got SOCAN and, and so on and so forth. And we're actually building a list of collecting societies so that we can help direct you to the right people if you're an event producer or running a competition. But essentially, you need that license. You need to get the performing rights license um, from the venue. And this is also for gym owners too, actually. If you have your own cheerleading gym, then you need a performing rights license to play the music in your gym. And... The music that you are playing in the competition, for example, needs to all be licensed. Um, technically, if you are um, playing unlicensed music in the competition, the uh, performing rights license isn't actually valid. So it's for event producers to protect yourselves. It's the, the best thing to do would be to, to, to do some level of enforcement, which we'll kind of talk about a little bit later. Um, and the other thing too, is you should also be reporting the songs that are being used at every single event. And that's actually something that we can help with with all the usage information. And of course, it's not really applicable for something like bespoke music, um, but they, they will have their own licenses. And as long as you know that they have all of the rights and they own the music and everything, then we're all good. Um, and that's something to kind of talk about and we can be reporting those usages to the collecting societies. Now, the other thing that you might want to do as a competition provider is you might want to create DVDs or other memorabilia. Again, this is something that you might get from your collecting society. It's also something else, something that we can help out, uh, help you out with. Um, and you also might want to live stream. And I know I had a conversation with someone earlier about this, um, but basically live streaming you can do on some platforms likely without having to get a license yourself because it'll be covered by the broadcasted platform for example youtube you and facebook um might you might be able to but it's always good to just double check that what their terms of agreements are and if you are actually allowed to live stream with all this music if you are hosting a live um live stream on your own platform your own website or you have a paid for subscription where people can can pay to watch a live stream then you're going to need to get a, a live streaming license yourself. And again, you can do that through the collecting societies, but um, it depends on the territory that you're wanting to live stream to, who's going to see it, revenues of your live stream subscription and so on. And um, it's something else that we can help with. And then finally, there's broadcast rights, which is putting it out on TV. Um, and it's typically up to the broadcaster to actually pay the performing rights license in this case. Um, but it may be that you'll need to report all of the songs that are being used in each of the mixes and what's being played in between. And so it's just a little bit of like being aware of the information that you're going to need to report. And again, we've got tools that can that we can help you with on that. So I think this kind of leads nicely into enforcement um, because I know some of the event producers and sometimes get a little bit under pressure of, you know, well, you're not enforcing this and so I don't need to license music. Well, actually, it's not down to event producers to enforce music licensing. Something I always like to say is, you know, you do, they don't enforce 
you to not be stealing people's phones, but um, it's the law and copyright law exists and that's there to protect music. So it's not down to the event producers to, to be uh, enforcing it, but of course it seriously helps um, and means they're gonna be much better protected. Now, we understand that there is a transition period. Um, we've gone through a few kind of wavy couple years here, um, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like safety rules. So they're there for a reason and some gyms choose to ignore them and can put their athletes and the industry at risk. And essentially the same goes for music. There are gonna be gyms and music producers who are not correctly licensing music and it's going to put the industry at risk and they'll continue to ignore it until something happens. And that something might be another lawsuit from a different publisher or a different record label. And that can happen unless we all start using, using music correctly. And you might ask, you know, how does anyone know if, um, how does anyone know that you're actually licensing the music? Well, there are actually music industry people who are spectating competitions already. And they may well be checking if the licenses are true or not. And they can contact you at any time to demand payment, which will be obviously more than what you would have paid for a license. And they can threaten to take that further. And of course, we don't ever want that to happen. Um, but the biggest tell all for them as well is the sort of restricted artist list. They each have their own restricted artists. If they hear it in a mix, they know 100% that that is not, um, not actually properly licensed. So some level of enforcement would actually be very beneficial for our industry, especially as we're kind of shifting and moving towards the Olympic movement. Um, we don't want that sort of bad um, exposure. And um, we know that in the US, some event producers are already um, enforcing, enforcing licensing of music, which is a great step. As for everyone else, it's just, it's not a matter of if, it's really just a matter of when. So you as a team, um, as a gym owner or a music producer, if you don't want to risk legal action, the best thing to do is to just license the music. And I hope that today we've kind of talked about the various different ways in which you can do that, what's going to be more cost effective than others, you know, what other options do you have? Um, and it's kind of your responsibility to be checking the music producers that you're working with, checking the license agreements, making sure that it is covering everything that you need. And if you're unclear, or uncertain about something, you can check some of our materials that we've that we've got on our Facebook group. Um, you can always just double check um, with some, you know, with some governing bodies or an event producer and so on as well. Um, but essentially, you know, we're here to help as well. Um, and we believe that easy to access, fully cleared, impactful music is an important part of maximizing participation. Um, and a broad audience engagement within the sport. And we just, like, as a sport, you know, we cannot tolerate another, um, another sort of legal risk with regards to music. And that's very much why we're here is we, we want you to be able to use music that you like and that you know, and we're working on, on making that happen through direct um, relationships within the music industry. And we're clearing all those rights, working through the 6 million, six million tracks, um, trying to figure out what is gonna be available available to you now and what will be available to you later on this year but we're constantly uploading music um, every sort of week to two weeks um, so that kind of concludes everything everything that we wanted to talk about today in terms of topics I think some of you guys have some questions so I think if we just go back I'm going to go back into our chat here and just find out um, what questions we might have um, so the first one we've got here is uh, if you just send these send these questions in, I'll just I'll get um, they'll come through and I'll just answer them as they come through. So the first question is, can I upload to my gym YouTube, but not with YouTube ads? Um, so essentially, yes, you can upload with music on Click and Clear and music that has the rights to upload onto YouTube. You'll have to check your license agreements. Um, but with Click and Clear, you definitely can. And you can upload that music onto YouTube, but it just means you can't monetize. So it means that ads will likely play, um, but you won't be earning the like any revenue from the YouTube from YouTube views. It'll be going likely to the to the labels and publishers. 
but of course if you're only getting a few hundred views it's it's really not a lot of money i used my background is actually in music licensing for youtube and i used to work directly with youtubers like pewdiepie and veritasium um, and yogs cast and uh you know, I've seen sort of see how much they can make, but also how very little they can make on a video too. Um, but yeah, essentially you can anything on Click and Clear, you can upload onto YouTube and Facebook. Um, so I've got another question here. Um, what if I have a music person that I love? How can I use Click and Clear with my current music producer? So you've got a music i'm assuming that means you've got a music uh, producer that you really like using that's great um if you're wanting to use click and clear and using the licenses all you need to do is you can create a playlist of music and you can send it to your producer who can then collaborate on that playlist with you and they can find other songs if they wanted to um but actually they can then they need they'll need to go through our approval process in order to get download access when they've got download access they can then um test the music out in your mix and then uh, they can license the music and it's totally it's all good so they don't have to already be working with us in order to work with us but they will need to kind of sign up in order to get the download access and test the mix it test the music out in the mix first but of course if you've got someone you love and you've found some really great music on click and clear send them our way um okay another question so this is about um kind of the online video uh, I can't monetize, so can I use it on Facebook Boost posts? Like if I put up my routine with my music and boost it to reach a wider audience. Um, yeah, I don't see a problem with that. Um, that's that's not you're just kind of boosting the post. You're not necessarily um, like paying. Well, there's some form of kind of advertisement there, but you're not directly advertising. You're just sharing a sort of editorial video in a way. It's a non-commercial video. Um, I don't see the I don't see the problem in in boosting a post, but it is something that we can probably just double check with some of our rights holders and just make sure that that's not then considered advertising and that actually it's just kind of part of of showing it um, to a wider audience. Um, and then we've got another question here: How are licenses delivered so I can show my music producer their legal tracks? Great question. So. We have, when you go ahead and want to license music, um, you'll go through a licensing agreement that will, when you've licensed a track, you'll get a PDF version of that agreement in your account. And you can share that with your music producer, you can share that with an event producer, and it includes all of the rights that you need. We have got an example one on our website on clickandclear.com. Um, and I think there's some some example language of things to look out for in our Facebook group, but essentially our EULA, which is an end user licensing agreement, that's the word to look for um, in our on our website that is all available there to kind of check it first, but all of the whatever you license music you'll get a PDF download. Okay. I uh, just click that one, answer live. Okay, um, got another really good question here. So what regions am I covered for? I'm in the UK, but I take teams to the US to, co to compete. Great. So we have worldwide rights for a lot of our tracks. Some tracks are limited to different territories. And wherever that's the case, it'll just mean that that territory won't show up. So when you go ahead and license music, you can license it for a single territory, for example, the UK or the US, and so on and so forth. And typically, the licenses that we that we charge um, that we that we sell are um, licensed per territory. Um, but if you want to go to the US as well, for example, going to Worlds, um, you can purchase our world license, which allows you to be in your home territory and then one other additional territory um for a slightly additional uh, a slightly higher fee hope that one answers your question um what if i stream over twitter is that okay so if if you're live streaming twitter's performing rights um 
license may cover you, but you're going to have to check with Twitter, just check their, check some of their documentation. If you are planning on uploading a video to Twitter, then it wouldn't actually be covered under our licenses. I don't actually believe Twitter is fully covered for performing rights. And I think, and that's why um, we won't have that right right now. We do for some of our tracks, but for the good majority, it, we're, we're kind of restricting it to YouTube and Facebook and they are kind of the, the main, um, the main things right now and again we've got another question with live streaming on ig it's again a similar thing um instagram is part of facebook so technically um it's likely to be covered under their performing rights so if you're live streaming on on instagram it's likely to be okay um but again if you're uploading a video onto instagram there's you know it there's a it's a slightly gray area um but because it's facebook owned it's more likely to be okay than not uh, another person, is it difficult to sign up for this? Is there a membership fee or do you just pay as you go? So with Click and Clear, um, you can sign up right now. Uh, Emma can probably get a sign up link um, to on the on the chat. And basically you just enter your details. You can then, the sign up essentially means that you can listen to a full version of the music. If you go onto the website um, without logging in, you'll only be able to listen to little snip, uh, kind of previews, 30 second previews of each track. Um, so it's, it is free to sign up and our uh, model right now is a pay as you go model. So you can license music for $15 or $25 per track per mix for one year. And that depends, the pricing is dependent on the artist. We've got a sort of independent artist tier and then a commercially released music tier. Um, and yeah, that's basically how you sign up as a music producer. There's an additional um, kind of step that you can take, which means that you can then also get download access and test these tracks out on on the um, on your mix before you actually go ahead and finalize it and, and license it. Um, so I think those are sort of all the questions that we had. Really great questions. Oh, no, we've got another one. Um, so in order to live stream a cheer competition, the organizer has to make sure that every team has a licensed mix. Yes, to live stream um, a cheerleading competition, the organizer does need to ensure that they that every team is licensed and the best way of doing that is some form of some form of enforcement, be it, you know, you if you're sending your music in, um, then send your license agreement in as well or it's that you need to have your license agreement ready for a spot check at any time um it's kind of up to the event producer as to how they want to do that we've got some ideas and we've also got um some wording with, with regards to sort of music rules that you can implement that will help you with that process um but that's kind of how that how that will work uh what if i mess up will i get in trouble meaning i violate copyright law but was trying to follow the rules so it's a difficult question. Um, sometimes they'll give you the benefit of the doubt um, if you were trying to follow the rules. And if you were, so let's say for example, you hired a music producer and you thought that they were fully legal and it turned out they were actually using unlicensed music. Well, it's not then your fault, it's the music producer's fault. So really it's worth checking the agreements with your music producers um but essentially you know if you do mess up the best case scenario is that they'll just be like you have to license the music and if it's not licensable they might charge you a slightly higher fee um or you know worst case scenario if you're using a lot of unlicensed music saying sorry i didn't realize i didn't know this information is not actually a valid excuse in copyright infringement um and so that's why you know these bigger lawsuits can happen but um essentially you know try your best to license music and if it's somebody else's fault for giving you unlicensed music then they're going to be the ones who are going to get in trouble um okay let's see what else i've never got an agreement before from a music producer what does it look like and how do i know it's real so as i said before we've got our our eula is available on our website on clickandclear.com uh, maybe Emma, if you can send the EULA, um, yeah, she's got it. Um, that give you an example um, of our own EULA, which is, you know, from the music industry. 
Um, and that's the, those are the kind of things to look out for. But as I kind of said before, talking about the rights that you need, the right to edit and adapt music, the right to choreograph, the right to um, create an online video and the right to distribute music within your team and the sort of main points, main, main rights that you need. And um, it's, if you're really unsure if it's real or not, you know, again, we're happy to help you out. And we know that those key identifiers, so we can always just cross, you know, just, just check over it or you can get an event producer to check as well, or you can always, you know, hire a lawyer or just get some legal advice from a music lawyer. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going with just a regular lawyer. Uh, music copyright is very complicated and there are specialist music lawyers for these types of things. Yeah. Okay. So any, I'm going to give you like two seconds. Any other questions? Quickly type away. <laughs> I think that's it. If you do have any other questions, you can email us on music at clickandclear.com. Emma, cue you for the email address to everyone. Um, I hope this has been a really informative session for you all. We are going to be running a few more webinars um, throughout the season. We know it's a really helpful, useful um, tool and resource for teams, music producers, governing bodies and event producers and so on. So if you do have further questions that you didn't ask today or just come to mind later on, please do feel free to reach out or join us on another webinar, or um, the best thing to do would be to, to join our Using Music in Cheerleading Facebook group, which is compiled of sort of music industry professionals and cheerleading um, professionals to have, kind of have an open discussion about um, open discussion about music, what you want, what you're looking for, get some advice, find some music producers, and so on and so forth. So hope you all enjoyed it today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we look forward to, to sharing this with everyone and uh, we'll speak to you all soon.